Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's uh, COVID-19 and Town Manager Update. I'm James Milan, joined, as always, by Adam Chapdelaine, our Town Manager. I should say, as almost always, we do get Christine Bongiorno on here once a month, and that's a nice change. Always good to talk to you, though, Adam. Welcome. And um, let me just say, we're going to get right into the COVID update as we always start these um, covering. But congratulations, town meeting did, in fact, come to an end uh, last night, and it was a marathon uh, town meeting season. So uh, I know you guys went till past 1130 last night. And uh, so on a short night's sleep, hopefully your last, uh, you know, Thursday morning uh, of a short night's sleep uh, for a while. Anyway, congratulations on that, but Thank let's you. get right to uh, the update. Um, what is going on uh, here in town with COVID for, for our populace? So I feel like we're, we're probably coming to our, either our last or near last, uh, you know, framing of this dialogue around COVID-19. Uh, as we know, the restrictions uh, statewide were lifted on May 29th in terms of gathering orders or industry specific restrictions. And then as of June 15th, the governor's emergency declaration will be lifted. So we're nearing the end of, uh, you know, of this changed world that we've been in for the past 14 or 15 months. Uh, we're still focusing very heavily on vaccinations. We'll be launching a vaccination dashboard on the town's website today and continuing to try to increase the numbers of Arlington residents that are vaccinated. And we're still meeting uh, as a leadership team twice a week to make sure that we're monitoring what is happening. Um, you know, I think we're all incredibly hopeful that the vaccines are as good as we all think they are, um, that the measures that we've all sort of, for lack of a better word, suffered through over the past 14, 15 months were very uh, worthwhile and that we are coming out of this. But, you know, we're not putting our pens away yet. There's still variants to watch. We still need to get kids under 12 vaccinated, hopefully sometime this fall. So there's still work to be done. But I think Arlington, uh, all in all, has weathered the storm quite well, and hopefully the, there are sunnier days ahead. Well, that is fabulous news that we've been waiting to hear uh, for a long time. We, uh, you know, again, to reiterate, uh, it's not that I didn't hear you say that there's more work to be done, and, and certainly you've identified uh, the areas that that needs to keep moving forward in, but uh, how nice to hear those words and to, to, to know that you from your position of, uh, you know, knowing a lot, but also needing to be very careful in the messaging that you give, are, are do see us as as coming into the clear, uh, so it feels. So that is that is great. And I know that um, you were saying that, but you know, there's vaccination is still a a, a major goal here, and um, I'm I'm hopeful that there, uh, you know, continues to be some kind of incremental progress among our our seniors. I'm I'm sure the Council on Aging and and you are still working in conjunction, uh, and of course Christine Bongiorno, the D director of Health and Human Services here, are all working together to to get to still get to our older population. Yes, indeed, absolutely. I, I think it is incremental. That's probably the right word, but it will remain a focus. And hopefully, over time, as folks see others getting vaccinated and having there be limited to no ill effects, that we can keep that incremental progress going. Any other news to share? I know we said we'd talk about town meeting. We'll do that last. Anything else uh, to share with us before that? So I did want to mention that on June 8th, uh, we will have a public forum on a local rapid recovery planning grant that Arlington received in partnership with Lexington and Bedford. Uh, the focus of that grant and of the forum is trying to develop new ways to connect people from the Minuteman bikeway to our business districts through all three towns, Arlington, Lexington, up to Bedford. Uh, it's being led by the Department of Planning and Community Development. It's a nice regional effort. And, you know, we, I think we always try to prioritize the Minuteman bikeway, but really having an intentional focus on how we get people from the bikeway down to our, our businesses that, that certainly need the support coming out of the pandemic is a pretty exciting opportunity. So if folks are interested, it'll be on June 8th. All the information is on arlingtonma.gov, uh, but we think that should be an exciting forum for people to participate in. Yeah, I'm uh, personally psyched uh, to talk to Ali Carter from our uh, Department of Planning and Community Development about um, particularly uh, this program, uh, because it does seem, you know, it's it's unusual um, and necessary. 
Um, and there does seem to be excitement building about it. So, um, you know, folks out there look look for a uh, an ACMI news interview with Ali Carter about this coming up soon. Um, okay, so let's just let's just let's wrap up town meeting one more time. Uh, Adam, obviously, uh, as I said, marathon session in general, and including last night's, um, but you are done uh, with business for the year. Anything uh, that you want to share with us from either these last sessions or your overall observations? So I would say, as you said, you know, we did 11 nights and last night we went right up till midnight to get finished. So if I if I don't nod off before the end of this interview, or if I do, I hope you understand. <laughs> hope you understand. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think overall, now that we're done, I would say I just have the world of gratitude for the staff and the moderator for their real incredible effort in putting together this virtual town meeting and managing it and staffing it over the course of the past, I guess would be uh, six weeks now. Um, so, you know, just, really incredible effort and commitment and dedication on their part, uh, helping town meeting members access it and, and, and facilitating the whole program. Uh, an equal uh, debt of gratitude to town meeting members for their patience, their diligence, their commitment. Um, you know, we had overwhelming attendance when we were in person when, and when we'll go back in person, 252 town meeting members, the average always seems to be around 190 to 200 members in the room on any given night. We ranged from all the way up to, I think, 200. And I think one night we had all 252 town meeting members there, but an average 230, 235 town meeting members. So really great participation and commitment over a long duration of town meeting. Um, and that's excellent, right? That's a huge credit to our town meeting members. And overall, um, though there were, you know, there were moments with the, the online system that were challenging. We got through a very lengthy warrant. We got a lot of the town's business done past budgets, past important zoning changes, made important, um, I would say social justice changes, changing Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day, recognizing Juneteenth, um, and, and, and more efforts in that regard. Uh, so great, great work overall. And I think the highlight last night, among, among you know, several articles being addressed, but the highlight being the Community Preservation Act uh, budget being passed for this upcoming year, with really exciting projects across town, investing in historical assets, open space and recreational assets, affordable housing assets, really doing exactly what the Community Preservation Act uh, was set forth to do. So uh, I, I think more than anything, I just have a lot of thanks to give to everybody that made it happen and everybody that participates to make Arlington the very participative, active democracy that it is. Yeah, I can't help. Uh, but echo a little bit of what you're saying, because when you think about 252 town meeting members, plus all of the town officials that need to be in attendance for all or portion of the, the, the proceedings, just how difficult and naughty a lot of the issues are, how much deliberation needs to take place. And then you think about that in the aggregate, you guys spent 34 hours at least um, on this over these last couple of months. And those are all hours that are coming outside of uh, everybody's working hours, um, deep, deep into the evenings, et cetera. It is a uh, truly a, a sacrifice and, 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 and a, a donation of time and energy on your guys' part collective, collectively that all of us, all 43 plus thousand of us here in town uh, benefit from and depend on. So um, really uh, a tribute, uh, you, you said it better, of course, but that's what you're paid for, um, but a tribute to all of, uh, all of those who participated and all of those who supported that participation technologically and otherwise uh, for it to, to happen, because it really is quite a feat and, um, and you, you deserve to a collective <sighs> sigh of both relief yeah. and hopefully a little R&R &R for all of you as well. Um, so on that note, and uh, with appreciation for all involved, as, as I said, um, I have been speaking with Adam Chapdelaine in what uh, he correctly identified. Uh, we may not for very much longer be talking about as the COVID-19 update, uh, but we'll continue as a town manager update because there's always uh, important stuff to talk about with our town manager. Adam, thanks for your time. Of course. Um, and thank you out there for joining us. I'm James Milan. This has been the COVID-19 and Town Manager Update for, for this week, and we'll see you next time.